why TIP trailers are truly the best available. The TIP dry van trailer is a good example of the engineering and materials quality that TIP specifies for all of its equipment. Let's follow a typical dry van as it goes through each step of its manufacturing process. The fifth wheel is the name given to the casting on the rear deck of the tractor, which accepts the kingpin and holds it securely as the trailer is pulled down the highway. The first component to be made is called the upper fifth wheel assembly, which incorporates the kingpin, a critical item which will connect the tractor to the trailer itself. Together, these assemblies must withstand the full weight of the trailer and its load. A fully loaded trailer may weigh upwards to 60,000 pounds, so a good margin of safety is provided to withstand the stress of high speeds and heavy usage. TIP upper fifth wheel assemblies are generally made upside down on a special frame or jig that holds the parts in position for welding. Downhand welding provides a secure bond for all parts and is done by hand to assure the highest degree of craftsmanship. The next part of the dry van trailer to be assembled is the nose section. The strength of the nose section is important because the load-bearing design of the dry van trailer makes the nose function like the pillar of a bridge. A strong nose section is a strong foundation for the rest of the trailer. The nose section is placed on an assembly jig over the upper fifth wheel assembly. Steel cross members which are generally four-inch I-beams spaced at 12-inch intervals, are placed onto this assembly jig. These cross members provide the foundation of the trailer when joined to the nose section and upper fifth wheel assembly. TIP's quality specifications call for a floor made of laminated hardwood, a full one and three-eighth inches thick. The lamination process produces individual boards 12 inches wide and as long as the trailer floor. This results in a smooth, moisture-resistant, low-maintenance floor for all TIP trailers. The floor is attached to the cross members. TIP's rigid specifications call for a minimum of three screws per board for each cross member. Dry freight vans incorporate an engineering feature called semi-monocoque construction. A strong but lightweight van body is made possible by the interconnection of side sheets and side posts. The side sheets, or skin of the trailer, actually carry a good deal of the main weight and stress of the cargo. This cutaway drawing shows how the side posts are combined with side sheets to form a strong, tight structure which will bear stress and transfer it to other trailer components. The side walls of the van are made by laying outside sheets on a large table over pre-positioned side posts. Rivets are manually placed in pre-punched holes. When all the rivets are in position, the entire assembly passes through a large press which securely fastens all components into an integral structure. Careful inspection of each side wall as it leaves the large press assures proper and firm placement of each component. Here's the inside of a side wall produced for a special kind of van. It clearly shows the side sheets, the side posts, and the top and bottom rails. The wall is lifted to the jig on which the upper fifth wheel assembly, nose section, and floor have been installed. The bottom rail is then joined to the floor cross members by four rivets at the end of each cross member. Once the walls have been securely fastened, the trailer is ready to receive a rear frame and door assembly. Like the nose section, this rear frame and door assembly must provide much of the trailer's strength and stability. Just as a bridge pier supports a section of the bridge at one end, the TIP specified door frame features all welded high tensile steel construction with welded hinge butts. There are four hinges on each door compared to three often found on competitors' equipment. The rear frame is fabricated on a large fixture, which allows it to be rotated to permit downhand welding for added strength. Finishing of the frame readies it to accept the doors, which is the next step of trailer fabrication. TIP specified doors are made of .025-inch aluminum over three-quarter-inch plywood cores. 
The inside of each door is faced with a galvanized steel sheet for added strength and durability. The strength and tight seal of these doors is critical to customer satisfaction and a trouble-free fleet. With the mounting of the rear door assembly, the trailer is now prepared to receive the roof. First, roof bows, generally fabricated from aluminum I-beams, are installed at 24-inch centers and are attached with TIP-specified buck rivets to the top rails of each side. On a TIP trailer, the roof itself is made of 0.040-inch aluminum sheeting, 25% stronger than the 0.032-inch sheeting specified by much of the trailer industry. This sheeting is pulled forward and firmly attached to the nose section wall with rivet space two inches apart. Special tools are used to stretch the aluminum roof tightly across the bows to provide a solid connection between the side walls, nose section, and rear assembly. This connection, which allows stresses to move evenly among component parts, is a key feature of semi-monocoque construction. On the inside, one quarter inch thick plywood sheeting is installed over the side posts to protect the posts and to provide a smoother interior. The plywood sheeting is increased to one half inch thick at the lower 24 inches to add protection from forklift blades and pallets. The nose section has a one half inch thick plywood lining floor to ceiling to withstand rough loading. Note that the wood floor does not extend all the way to the nose section. The high tensile steel of the upper fifth wheel assembly serves as the floor of the nose section. A steel threshold plate finishes off the rear of the floor assembly to protect the floor from damage from forklift trucks and pallet impact. The running gear comes next, selected from the best components available. An important running gear component is the axle beam, which supports the wheels on spindles at each end of the beam. Oil, which lubricates the wheel bearings, is stored in a cavity between the spindle and the wheel and is held there by an oil seal on one side and the hubcap of the wheel on the other. The axles, wheels, and tires are assembled onto a steel frame commonly called a suspension. Most suspensions are attached to a slider, which enables the axles to be positioned in various locations, forward or backward, to meet certain weight distribution requirements. The stop blocks shown here on the bottom of the slider are not placed there to physically stop the movement of the suspension. They are only indicator blocks to show the limit to which the suspension can be moved. Connection of the suspension to the trailer body depends solely on the pin locking assembly. The next trailer component is called the landing gear. It is installed in the front of the trailer to support the trailer when not attached to a tractor. The landing gear features horizontal and diagonal braces which provide for added strength and stability. With the basic trailer complete, the functional systems are added and tested. The brake system is designed to meet specific demands identified by TIP and federal regulations. The brake system depends on a tractor for the air pressure which controls brake application. The air is supplied through the trailer glad hand. The electrical system completes the functional components of the trailer. The electrical system depends on the tractor for power supply. The electrical system provides brake lights and other safety lights for safe operation. The electricity is supplied through the seven-way plug. This completes our highlight tour of the typical dry van, showing how TIP emphasizes quality design, quality materials, quality craftsmanship. Welcome to TIP, the leader in the trailer renting and leasing business. TIP is committed to being the reliable, hassle-free transportation solutions company. 
The purpose of this video is to give you a general overview of what happens in a branch on a daily basis and to introduce you to the TIP employees who work in the field to serve our customers. Together, we'll take a tour of three different branches. We'll look at both their similarities and differences. At these branches, we'll be talking with branch operations managers, mechanics, and sales managers about their responsibilities and day-to-day -day activities. Finally, we'll be looking at the basic operations of the branch, including inspections, inventory control, maintenance, and repairs. The overall purpose of any branch is to rent, lease, and sell trailers, and to provide a convenient way for customers to pick up and drop off trailers as they are needed. That's why branches are usually located near major highways and industrial or commercial areas. An area like Southern California has several branches of different sizes that all work together to serve one of the busiest trucking areas in the country. In the next few minutes, you'll see three of these branches. First, you'll see Commerce, a super branch with the largest yard and number of trailers. They also have the largest staff, including operations, mechanics, and salespeople. Next, you'll see the Vernon branch, which has a yard about half the size of the Commerce branch and a much smaller staff. Finally, we'll make a stop at Anaheim, which has a much smaller yard than Vernon and about half the staff. Now let's find out more about each of these branches. We would be considered a super branch uh, on how they break down the uh, classification of different branches. And we have uh, operation staff, the mechanic staff, and then the two sales that are based out of here. And we do help the other branches when there's a large order uh, because we have well over 1,000 trailers located out of here. We're the largest branch in the Los Angeles area. And because of that, it acts uh, like a hub for Southern California. It, it takes in uh, a lot of transient trailers and a lot of trailers come one way in and one way out. And with, with that kind of activity, there's increased phone calls, uh, increased activity between Devon and, and Commerce, and Commerce and other branches in the country. You have local customers that are only may haul in California who may have 10 of their own trailers, and at a month in, they may need you know 20 or 30 for a specific customer for a close-in of a month or a quarter in. And at that point, that's when they would come to TIP and, and get their peak trailers, the trailers during their peak season. And they may need 20 or 30 trailers just for one customer for one month. And then we have other customers that have 40 or 50 or 60 you know, trailers, and they'll keep them out for a long, long period of time, long-term lease. Now let's look at Anaheim and Vernon, which are much smaller but just as busy as the Commerce Branch. We do need to be where our customers are, especially like our major customers. Some of our customers have over 100 trailers on rent, and they want to be as close as possible. That gets us, that, that is part of the reason why we get their business. And as far as staff, we have two salespeople. We have um, a total of four operations people, including myself, and we have a staff of three mechanics, and we've also just hired a driver slash mechanic. His primary responsibility is to deliver trailers, pick up trailers, and that sort of thing. And it's quite challenging because some days we don't have a whole lot of space to deal with. So we just gotta make sure we have enough orders versus returns so we keep a balance during the course of the day. We have grown the fleet and our ins and outs on a daily basis sometimes. It, well, for example, yesterday we had approximately 50, 50 trailers in and out and that's transactions, transactions basically. And that was, that's a lot of work. We could have our slow periods of nesting. We'll go in and out for maybe an hour or so, and then you'll have like s four hours straight. You have drivers in and out, and, the and then the phones go on, and then you still have to, to answer the phones, and you have to deal with whoever walks in. We're only on two acres here, so our facility doesn't hold that many trailers. So we use the other branches to work with us as well. Currently, there's four people on staff, two in operations, Mary's in sales, and we have Milton, who is our mechanic. As you have seen, a branch consists of a modular trailer-type building, surrounded by a yard with a number of van and flatbed trailers. The larger branches have a larger staff, with more trailers and more facilities for maintenance and repairs. However, all branches are very busy every day. What makes these branches really run 
are the people that work there. Let's learn about the major jobs in a branch. As an operations manager, I'm responsible for getting the equipment ready, which is a big concern, making sure we charge the proper rates, having the equipment actually ready when the customer does show up, not shoved in the back row with a big hole in it or missing some tires, um, getting the customer hooked up to it. In some branches, there is also an assistant operations manager. As assistant operations manager, we're helping out with the day-to-day -day activities of the branch. That includes inspecting trailers in and out, taking care of things such as the tire recapping, um, damages, bids through different vendors that come to our yard, as well as managing the mechanics and the general operations in the bookkeeping, the billing, and the account payable sides of the business. Now let's look at the role of the mechanic. Our mechanic is, is a, he actually does the repairs on our trailers, the repairs that he can actually do. Some of them, of course, we have to vend out. Our responsibility is basically to make sure that our units are roll-worthy and they meet the federal highway standards, you know, and that, you know, they're safe and every, all the things are working. The difficult is when they need, the tr they have a customer, they need 20 or 15 trailers at a time. If there's any questions, for, for example, with a reef or a lift gate, if they need to know how to operate it, if they need additional information, that's where Milton would also step in and show them exactly how to do, or to bring down a lift gate, or to turn on a reef, or to set the temperature gauge, that kind of a thing. Branch operations also works closely with sales. Let's learn more about the sales function. The sales and TIP is, is getting in front of customers and trying to handle the transportation solutions, visiting people face to face. Uh, it's important to look at their facility, look what type of operation they have. In the old days, we'd come back, you want 10 trailers, here's a rate. And then we would just go into a rate war with our competition, and that's not what we're selling. We're selling quality, we're, we're selling service, and we're selling a lot more that's behind the, the rate that we offer. One thing I like about sales is we touch on all aspects of size of businesses from three employees to 3,000 employees. We'll deal from one-day rentals and 100 trader, trader sales packages. So you're always changing what you're selling. It doesn't become that you're selling Model A or whatever the one item you're going to be selling to a lot of different customers. We find out what type of, a trip, of equipment that he needs and how long he's going to need it for. We can come in there and, and set them up with the right program, whether it's a long-term lease, whether it's a rental, whether it's a lease with an option to purchase, or an outright purchase where he may want to buy his equipment outright. I do a, a quite a bit of cold calling myself, and uh, I found that um, by doing that, I'm able to generate some relationships with some people out there that we didn't have business before. And uh, I always make it a point to do three or four cold calls a day. We look at ourselves instead of not just being a salesperson, but a consultant, going in and finding out more about his business and then giving him some solutions as it pertains to trailers. Teamwork in a branch is critical to success. Also, because of small staffs in a branch, everyone has to pitch in and do whatever it takes to serve the customer. For example, when three drivers pull into the yard at once, Everyone drops what they're doing and picks up a clipboard. The phones are ringing off the hook, and there's, there's 10 drivers out in the driveway. If I have to, I'll just grab the paperwork and go back to the shop to get it done. Get them all green tagged, get them ready, get the leases inspected ahead of time before the drivers all show up at, at one time, and as well as getting making sure the mechanics are on top of getting the, the right uh, equipment ready, whether it's 53-footers or 48-foot with roll doors. They're usually looking for a specific type of trailer. So we need to work together and to communicate that in a fast uh, um, pace so that we can, we can react very quickly. The misconception that, that we have or that corporate would have with uh, the branches is how much work that really is done. And, and it's, it's, I've had an opportunity to go back to, uh, to uh, the former uh, Bala Kinwood before we moved to Devon Service Center. And to get to see how much work they have to do as well is, is a misconception that we have in the branch. Branches are involved in the activities that provide customers with the trailers they need when they need them. 
From the initial sales visit, through getting trailers ready to roll, to checking them back in, all are functions of a branch. Let's look in more detail at the specific branch operations that are the most important. These include inspections, inventory control, maintenance and repairs. Let's start by looking at inspections. Inspections are done before a trailer is released to a customer for rental or lease, and then inspections are done again when the trailer returns to the yard. Outbound inspections ensure that the trailer is roadworthy and to note the condition of the trailer before it leaves the yard. Inbound inspections identify maintenance that needs to be performed and any damage that must be charged to the customer. On an outbound inspection, you start at the front of the trailer and basically just do a full circle, checking every aspect of the trailer. When you're at the front, you're looking at the bottom rail and the panels for any kind of holes, cuts, damage. Obviously, on the outbound, you don't want any to be there, and they should not be there. You're also checking the service glad hand, which the driver hooks up to. You're looking at all the lights as you walk around the trailer. As you get toward the rear of the trailer, you check the tires, make sure they're the right tread depth, the right air pressure. There's not a biased tire next to a radial tire. You look underneath, check the brake shoes. You check the brake lines, the cross members. Um, then you move around to the back, you check the door. Is the door going up and down properly or is it opening left to right properly? Is it sealing up properly? You go inside, you look at the roof, you look at the fly. We do inspections both when a trailer leaves the yard and when it returns to the yard. The inspection when it leaves the yard is to check to make sure that the trailer is 100% road ready, to make sure that we know all past and previous damages and repairs so that the next customer won't be charged for them. Upon return, we need to check for any new damages and any new situations that may have occurred with the trailer that would cause it not to be road ready at that time. We check every single part of the trailer, from the roof of the trailer to the undercarriage, the tires, the brakes, equalizers, airlines, um, bottom rails, everything on that trailer. We will go from the front of the trailer to the rear, open and close the doors, go inside, look at the roof, look at the floor, the walls. Every detail is checked on the trailer. On a reefer inspection, that would be a refrigerated unit. We also need to check the fuel amount in the tank and the hours on the reefer to make sure that we don't charge the customer for hours that they haven't used. Now let's look at the next function, inventory control. It's important to know at all times what types of trailers are in the yard and where they're located so that we can easily fill orders and have trailers ready when customers need them. Every day we do a yard map that shows us which trailers we have in the yard and their status, whether it be red tag necessary to do repairs or green tag ready to roll. We use one side of the yard for our red tag or damaged trailers, and the other side of the yard we park our green tag or ready to roll trailers that are in good shape. When a particular customer needs a trailer, we will have our yard jockey pull out that trailer and position the other trailers according to needs of other customers. As far as the inventory of tires is concerned, I mean, you got to do that once a month just to make sure you're not losing anything. Our branches maintain the fleet as well as perform maintenance for customers as part of their lease. Mechanics will also do an in-depth inspection of trailers to find ways to prevent problems. Typical routine maintenance includes changing and rotating tires, brake jobs, changing bulbs and fluids, and fueling reefer units. We get a whole slew of brake jobs, but those are the most common things, oil seals and brake jobs. We do one or two a day. Brake job, we spend almost six hours, six hours and a half. We inspected the whole thing, brakes, air system, lights, all that. If a branch has a mechanic, Many repairs can be done at the branch. Otherwise, repairs are sent out to a vendor. Typical repairs include fixing panels on the outside, repairing ply on the inside, and on occasion, replacing axles. Our branches also perform emergency breakdown service, where the mechanics travel to the customer's road locations and make repairs. We run across a lot of different types of damage, as in this case right here, we had um, damage to the panel, it was torn right here, so in this case we had to section it. 
and make sure also that it's watertight so that no water or anything gets like that to damage the cargo that would eventually come in here. Also, uh, when the, the wood is smooth, it won't tear up the box. Sometimes they have plastic and things. And also, like I said, the seal, it has to be air and light tight, depending on the type of cargo. To properly utilize our tires, we need to do recapping here at the location, tracking the tires that come off of the trailers, keeping track of the tread depths, sending them out for recapping, returning them, and putting them back on the trailers as needed. Whether it's an after-hour road call, uh, emergency breakdown, or during business uh, uh, hours that we have uh, repair facilities that we can call on to get repairs, we have a mobile um, service van that we can send out of here, out of this location and several other locations with our mechanic to be able to handle any road call. And if it's something that's uh, major, then we can call on different vendors that we've already set up within the area. As we've seen in our trip to three branches, working in a branch is a fast-paced, multifaceted job. Operations and sales work together to ensure that customers can rent and lease the trailers they need when they need them. In this video, we learned that the job of the operations manager includes inspecting trailers, managing trailer inventory, supervising mechanics, and a wide range of administrative tasks. We also saw the mechanics who are responsible for getting trailers ready to roll. They spend most of their time on preventive maintenance and minor repairs such as brake jobs, repairing seals, and fixing tires. Finally, we learned that sales is responsible for finding new customers and finding ways to satisfy those customers' needs. In all, we say that no matter how large or small a branch is, Every staff member has an important role to play in providing reliable, hassle-free transportation solutions.